Let's go. Yo, what is going on guys? It's time for the Jojo High Train Greatness once again. This is my review of Diamond is Unbreakable, episode number 9. Echoes, 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 part 2. Oh my god, yo. Oh, Koichi, man, getting really awesome development in this episode, and I loved it. I love the development with Koichi. It was freaking cool. It was badass as hell. I love the development that he's gotten within this arc. And again, this is definitely Yandre Simulator back backwards back in night. Well, I should say this year 2016, but regardless, during through the timeline of JoJo, this is like the 90s version of like Yandre Simulator. E but even more fucked up because this is before the age of technology and shit like that. This is before the age of fucking Android phones of really advanced, you know, cell phones. This is like way before that. This is the 1990s, man. This is the mid-90s. 1999. So you could call this... That's why I call my other uh, my other one, my other episode, Yandere Simulator 1999 because this is exactly what it is, pretty much. But in this episode, we see the continuation of that. At the beginning, you know, she is a completely psychotic bitch. She really, really is. And again, if you ever play the game Yandere Simulator, it's pretty much just on that same level. Kind of, sort of. But except again, with no technology or any of that stuff, it's a completely different uh, scenario, different century, and it's more completely fucked up. Like, oh my god. Yo, fucking, oh my god. Whew. So Yukako pretty much still laying on the traps of making his, her beloved Koichi Senpai hers, pretty much. And what happens is that pretty much the beginning scene, he's trying to go to the bathroom, trying to take a piss, but unfortunately that didn't really work because there's a lock, because of one of the questions leading to like uh, Christopher Columbus or something like that. And I'm like, really? I mean, I know you're in Japan, but I'm pretty sure you would know mostly on that American history with Christopher Columbus. Or there was some kind of lock too he was trying to get with the code to get the right answer, but unfortunately, yeah, he pretty much done goofed, and he pretty much, yeah. You know, when a man has to go, he has to go. So, you know, there's there's no holding back. So what happens is he pretty much pissed himself, and for that, he felt really embarrassed, and then all, all of a sudden, it was very humiliating for him as someone who's a teenage boy first year in fucking high school as a freshman and pissing in his pants just felt like way too embarrassing to his taste so what happened is like even though you know she sees this you know even though he thinks of himself as a terrible person she still loves him but in a more psychotic way you know in other words she would even kill him just for the sake of being with him forever like she doesn't give a fuck if he dies so would she she wouldn't even care because it, she would belong all to him and Koichi is trying to get herself out of the situation, but unfortunately, the telephone lines are off the hook. She was going to go out and make some Italian dinner. But what happens was, apparently, he uses his stand, the Echoes, to go into the telephone booth to actually dial the, the number. But unfortunately, what happened is he doesn't have any money on him because he was wearing pajamas and not his regular clothes. So, all of a sudden, we see her stand ability, and she actually pretty much sensed it. She knew right away that, she was up, that he was up to something by using a stand ability echoes and what happens is um you know she's there and she's you no know, stalking him like always and pretty much you know she would do anything to keep her you know beloved senpai him out. and again she that's the only way i could explain the situation and what made him really stronger is that it's like you know what it's like bitch don't you get it i don't fucking love you man because you a crazy hoe! You are a crazy hoe! And she pretty much just doesn't accept it. Because there's this one time where he used the words of his echoes. And I remember the phone thing that he did too. Where pretty much he would pretty much dial like the actual magnetic tone. And what happened is, you know, he, she would create a wave signal for Josuke and o uh, Oisako to actually get the memo that where that exact island where um, Koichi is actually being held hostage. So, what happens is that now they finally realize it on the map and they decide to go out to Ko uh, Koichi to go save him. 
Now, what I really loved about this episode is Koichi handling the fight by himself without the need of Josuke and um, Ukiya Sako, which was fine. I actually really liked that because it gives such huge, again, huge cojones to Koichi, and I really liked that a lot because that's pretty awesome. Just seeing him get the character development that he needs to settle shit on his own like a real man is actually really cool. So we see Koichi, and he's getting extremely pissed because now he's in serious mode because he's got a stand. And what's really cool that his stand ability, while being, you know, attacked by, um, while being attacked by, um, Fucking um, um, Yuka, uh, Yuka, uh, Yukano's uh, stand, where she actually did, he pretty much got into a hardened state, and uh, Koichi thought his stand actually died. Now, the thing is that if his stand were to die, he would die along with it, because that's how the term works. Once your stand goes bye-bye, that's it, you're fucked, and you die along with it. So, technically, he thought he died, but it was going to a metamorphosis state, and it evolves into stage 2, or phase 2, I, I believe, what it was called in the translation. Now, it's really cool. Now, again, definitely Dragon Ball Z vibes when it comes to this, because, again, when it came to Cell, how he manifested, except that the only difference is he needed, you know, the androids for him to actually evolve into his perfect form. But, this time around, when it comes to this second phase... You know, we see him, like, he got a little bit shorter, but he kind of looks like he grew, like, ears or antennas or something like that. And it looks really badass as hell. And he's able to create certain effects when it comes to certain objects. Like, you could say whatever word you want, and it will happen. Like, that object will become something. Like, it could become, like, heat or ice or cold or fucking electric or whatever the fuck it is. You know, that's exactly what it did. Like, that one scene with the electric chair where she's trying to get into the door, Echoes helps him out by, you know, combining, like, the echo waves and the electric, and she's like, she touches the fucking door, electricity. That shit was actually really cool. And I did like the way that he actually wrote the word whoosh. He actually goes whoosh, like, fucking wind and shit. Yo, that shit was actually really cool, man. So, definitely when it comes to the stand, not only did Koichi evolve, but his stand evolved into a much more powerful thing as well. Now, this is actually very fascinating when it comes to the world of stands. Now we know that stands can actually evolve, that they can actually evolve themselves into a next stage. Now, this could also mean that Jotaro stand, Star Platinum, could do the exact same thing. Maybe, but that could be a brand new thing in the future. I'm really hoping we see stuff like that when it comes to stands. Where, technically, when it comes to that, we see, you know, stands evolving into different stages, which that will be really badass. You know, it will give me either Dragon Ball Z, well, not so much Dragon Ball Z vibe, but, like, either Pokemon vibes or Digimon vibes, you know, etc. like that. Like a, like a power-up or, like, a, an involvement, that would be really cool. Or Digimon, even, especially, like, Digivolve? Oh, fuck yeah. So, anyways, yeah, so that's pretty much what we see. And then, at the very end, we see that pretty much, like, you know... Despite, you know, what he says of his true feelings, Koichi was actually made, made, um, y Yokokako love him, even though, from all the shit, you know, he pretty much did to her and whatnot, and actually tried to fight her off. And her stand ability, while she was actually in the break of actually, like, you know, actually about to die and shit, we see that, like, she was going completely psycho, and because of all, you know, the hateful words that she gave to her and stuff like that, from all the, the negative negativity that, you know, gone through him, and actually the actually tell her off, we see that, you know, she lost her confidence, and what happens is that she actually, you know, her hair turns completely gray, and she's still going after her, because that's what happens when technically, you know, she was about to fall over and stuff, well, actually, you know, unleashing his stand ability. And what happened is she was about to fall on the rock. But what happened is she was so scared of Frey, her hair starts to turn gray, and then she pretty much just passed it out. Because the rock bounces. And I'm like, what the fuck? It had to do something with Koichi's stand. Where the stand ability was able to make a thing called bounce. And I guess when it when it echoed the word bounce. When it echoed the word bounce. Um, the, the rocks became bouncy, and then she bounced right the fuck up, and then she fell around the thing, she was scared of fright, and her hair turns pretty much gray, and her stand ability is pretty much weakening. Now, she didn't die, her stand ability is just weakening. And she was wondering why he saved them, was because, well, technically, even though I really don't really love you, I, you know, you know, I'm not, like, I'm not that particular relationship with you at all, I just can't kill an innocent girl or something, like, I can't just kill, like, a girl, like, that's just not my thing, or I just, I'm just not a person who, who, like, I'm not a high school student who's gonna live in the life of murder or something like that, like, no, that's just not how I roll. I just try to make you snap out of your senses, to try to make you, you know, come to your senses, that bitch. 
loud and clear, I just don't like you. I mean, don't get me wrong, you're a nice girl, and yada yada yada. You could be nice, you could be sweet, and as long as you don't try to get too obsessive with me, you know, we're cool, man. We're cool. So, you're not, you're not really a hoe after all. So, that's pretty much what happens, and that's the entire episode right there. And I believe now that um, Yukano could be an actual new ally for uh, Koichi now. So, because we did see her, you know, especially in the video games, you know, she has a, a tag team move, you know, with Koichi as well. So, this could possibly mean that she is going to become yet another ally to the whole thing of the Josuke group, or the group of heroes, or whatever, that they can use to fight off against the main enemy and who the real corporate really is. So, yeah, that's basically it. So, that's the episode. So, overall, very nice episode. Character development and new involvement for stands. They can actually evolve. That's actually pretty sick. So, another solid, clean cut of a 5 out of 5 episode. Definitely much... Uh, I think I would definitely say this was definitely a hands-on improvement of, like, last week's... Well, actually, no. Last week and this week's were both really outstanding. Because it's JoJo. JoJo makes everything better. And it's so bizarre. And it just works so many ways when it comes to... Because we know JoJo is an old-school series compared to new-school stuff. So it only makes sense for that particular kind of series to actually feature that. You know, that feature that style. Like, that feature that kind of story writing. Because you don't see that kind of writing now too often when it comes to newer animes. Like, straight up. Or manga. Well, in this case, new, in newer age of manga. I'm just saying. You know, spread the truth. Even though I really do like new age manga. Don't get me wrong. I do like both old age and new age manga. But, you know, I'm just saying. There are some writers back in the old days that will whoop the shit out of people who are doing stuff out of the new. You know, that's just my take on it. So anyways, that's pretty much it. I am done. This is Ninja Reviewer signing out. Give me your thoughts in the comment section below of this week's episode of JoJo's Diamonds Unbreakable Episode 9. I'll see you guys next week for 1-0 Episode 10. And as always, peace, soul, love, chicken grease, and the sky is the limit. And also, don't forget, spread the word, Moose Milk. <laughs> so yeah. So again, don't forget to crush that like button and subscribe, and yeah, y'all have a good day.